China is driving the Philippines closer to Japan. The United States is deporting Chinese illegal immigrants, and China and Belarus are holding joint military exercises. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. This episode is sponsored by Incogni. Now, you probably know that companies are collecting your personal data, but you may not realize just how many. Dozens, maybe hundreds, most of which you've never heard of. And you have no idea what they're doing with it. Incogni helps stop them. I'll explain more at the end. Chinese illegal immigrants have been deported from the United States on the first large flight since 2018. 116 were deported, according to the Associated Press. They cite the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, which did not actually specify a number, so it's unclear where that number came from. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security does say that it's working on more such flights through talks with Chinese authorities. Ah yes, those talks that the White House loves so much. Although these days, the White House might not love Biden talking quite so much. This comes just as immigration has once again reared its head as a serious issue in a U.S. presidential election, with both U.S. President Joe Biden and former U.S. President Donald Trump trying to talk tough on China and immigration. China accepting the repatriation of such illegal immigrants marks a huge change compared to its previous policy, which was, we don't know them. Those Chinese spies, uh, I mean, immigrants could have come from anywhere. Chinese artificial intelligence developers are also in a pickle since OpenAI has now blocked access in China. Previously, although ChatGPT was blocked by the Great Firewall, Developers could use VPNs to access OpenAI tools to fine-tune their own AI, but that is not the case anymore. OpenAI hasn't officially commented on its decision, but this comes as the U.S. increasingly tries to limit China's access to U.S. high-tech, particularly in the field of artificial intelligence. Chinese AI developers are turning this into an opportunity to get more Chinese users for their products, but not everyone is happy about the situation. Xiaohu Zhu, founder of Shanghai's Center for Safe AGI, said that the OpenAI move has caused significant concern within China's AI community, and that the decision raises questions about equitable access to AI technologies globally. So in order for there to be equitable global access to AI, a private company within the United States must be forced to share their technology with China. How communist of them to see it that way. Speaking of which, the Chinese Communist Party is finding a way around electric vehicle tariffs and barriers in the European Union, namely by having BYD, one of China's EV giants, open an EV plant in Turkey. Oh, sorry, I meant Turkey. I didn't mean to dead name. This news came just days after the EU added provisional tariffs of up to 38% on Chinese EVs following an investigation that found state subsidies meant they were unfairly undermining European EVs. I thought communism was about spreading fairness across the globe. Just look at all the historical examples of how much better communism has made the world. Turkish media said this would be a $1 billion investment by BYD, and according to one consultant, it would help circumvent the European tariffs. You see, due to a 1995 customs union, cars made in Turkey enjoy beneficial access to Brussels, with Istanbul and the Marmaria area in Turkey being one of the world's leading centers of automobile industry. When it comes to cars, Turkey is killing it, almost as hard as the Ottomans killed Armenians. Never forget. But China's not done giving grief to Europe. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. It seems that Europe is keen to send leaders to Beijing to have a chat with Xi Jinping. Because if talks don't work the first time, surely they'll work the second, or third, or thousandth. This time it's Viktor Orban, Hungary's controversial prime minister who paid a surprise visit to China. He's on a peace mission for Ukraine. Why him? Well, Orban has warm relations with the Kremlin and has won huge investments from the CCP. But he also said that the number of countries that can talk to both warring sides is diminishing. Hungary is slowly becoming the only country in Europe that can speak to everyone. Yes, it's all about peace, no ulterior motive. Although Orban has had a bad relationship with the EU, but did roll out the red carpet for Xi Jinping. I wonder why. Meanwhile, China is holding joint military exercises with Putin's friends in Belarus, and right by the Polish border, too. 
How convenient! China is conducting a military exercise on EU and NATO borders. The Belarusian military described these exercises, dubbed Eagle Assault, as joint anti-terrorist training. Chinese state-run media outlet Xinhua said the exercises will involve hostage rescue operations and counterterrorism missions that will enhance training levels and coordination capabilities, as well as deepening practical cooperation between the armies of the two countries. Right. Because China and Belarus are so close to each other, and Belarus is surely known as a world-class military. I'm sure this has absolutely nothing to do with scoring points with Russia or intimidating Ukraine, NATO, and the EU. But joint military cooperation and new alliances can go both ways. I'll tell you how after the break. Welcome back. A Taiwanese sergeant has been charged with leaking military secrets to the CCP. The soldier, named Chen, was indicted for allegedly photographing and leaking confidential defense information to Beijing. The Chinese Communist Party claims Taiwan for itself and has been threatening the island with unification by any means necessary for years. Taiwan knows that the CCP is ramping up spying and infiltration of the island, and has been warning its forces to be ever more vigilant, which might be how Chen was caught. Taiwan's High Prosecutor's Office said that Chen worked at a Navy training center and was recruited in 2022 by an unspecified number of people who collected intelligence from mainland China using messaging apps. The office went on to say that between April 2022 and February 2023, Chen photographed secret national defense information and sent information via Telegram and Line for a total illegal gain of about $5,000. Wait, he betrayed his country for five grand? I'm not saying he should have done it at all, but if it was for millions, I could have kind of understood. You can't even buy a used car for five grand. Not only is Chen a traitor, he's a terrible negotiator. China is accusing Philippine warships of damaging a reef in the South China Sea. Because we all know how committed Beijing is to environmental well-being and preserving the corals of the South China Sea. On Monday, China's Ministry of Natural Resources put together a comprehensive report saying that Philippine warships have been illegally beached around the Second Thomas Shoal and the Spratly Islands which the CCP calls the Nasha Islands. The ministry said that this has seriously damaged the diversity, stability, and sustainability of the reef ecosystem. What, didn't she get the menu? It's diversity, equity, and inclusion. Harming that would grab the West's attention real fast. The illegally beached ship is the Sierra Madre, an old World War II era warship that was intentionally run aground on the Second Thomas Shoal. So the Philippines would have an outpost there to protect against Chinese incursion. The CCP and the Philippines have been tussling over these waters for a long time, and the incidents have grown increasingly violent. The Sierra Madre was beached back in 1999, so China is saying this ship that's been sunk for 25 years is just now damaging the reef? Oh, does this mean it's a haunted ship like in Super Mario World? Over the weekend, the Philippines accused China of anchoring its largest Coast Guard vessel in the Filipino Exclusive Economic Zone in a move meant to intimidate, even though both countries last week agreed to restore trust and, wait for it, resume talks. Yep, those good old talks again, they're about as effective as using healing crystals to calculate your taxes. But maybe the Philippines has a good plan B, because it signed a defense pact with Japan. Yes, it turns out talks can be effective. It just depends on who you're talking to. Both countries are close U.S. allies and have territorial disputes with the CCP. And both are alarmed at Beijing's increasingly regional aggression and belligerent military behavior. Someone finally wised up and realized maybe talks aren't super effective against tanks. Just ask Tank Man. Discussions got nothing on obstructions. The new Reciprocal Process Agreement would allow for the deployment of Japanese forces for joint drills with the Philippines and vice versa. God, I hope it involves Gundams. Japan was extremely concerned by the Chinese Coast Guard knife attack and boat ramming against the Philippines a few weeks ago. So China is once again bringing people and countries together. The CCP, however, was outraged by Japan's concern. China's foreign ministry spokesperson said that the Asia-Pacific region does not need military blocs, let alone small groupings that instigate bloc confrontations or a new Cold War. And he reminded Japan of its World War II-era war crimes. 
Ah, China pulled the Rape of Nanjing card. Also, I'm pretty sure the block building in the Asia Pacific began with China, North Korea, and Russia. Now, I've got a video I want to show you that you're going to love. But first, this episode is sponsored by Incogni. Whenever you do anything online or use apps on your phone, there are tons of companies that are collecting your personal data. When I signed up for Incogni more than two years ago, I discovered there were dozens of data brokers that potentially had my private information without my permission. So how do you protect yourself? Get as many of these companies as possible to delete your data from their systems. That's what Incogni does for you. Incogni has already gotten my details removed from 248 of these data brokers who've collected my info, and I didn't have to do anything after signing up. Incogni just handles it. So I recommend you get Incogni for yourself and reclaim your own data. Go to incogni.com slash uncensored and use the code uncensored to get 60% off an annual Incogni plan. Get your personal data off the market with Incogni. And here's that video I want to show you. It's from my new channel, Deep Thoughts While Gaming, where I give you a fun and possibly philosophical look at popular video games. Check out the latest episode about the game Detroit Become Human. It's called, If a Robot Identifies as a Woman, give it a click. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.